Hi, welcome to Steve's Kitchen. If you've been with the channel a while, you know that we are great coffee lovers. I made that espresso layer cake. We've also had Vietnamese coffee. I think also we made some espresso truffles. I'll probably leave a little playlist of espresso or coffee recipes on the channel. Today we're doing an unboxing. You also know that I'm a lover of Breville for no other reason than I think their appliances are really great and they're Australian, so I'm flying the flag. And today, we're gonna to be unboxing something a little bit special. It is the Barista Express. This is a beautiful machine, at least I hope it's a beautiful machine. We're gonna unbox it now, see what's in the box, have a little play with it, and then I'll give you some demonstrations, and hopefully, we'll be able to see whether this thing is any good or not. Now, we've got that usual really good quality boxing. I always liken this to Apple, the quality. I love this plum color. So it said the Barista Express with conical burr grinders and dose control. Grind, dose, extract all in one. It's got its own bean hopper. Let's not talk about the box anymore. Let's get this open. If we open up the four flaps on the top straight away, there's the booklet, not too interested in that. I might read it later. Here we've got one of the things about this Barista Express is it has, if I can open it up here, it has pressurized, these ones here, these are pressurized baskets and these are more professional non-pressurized baskets. So you've got the, the double dose uh, and the single so dose in pressurized and you've got the non-pressurized baskets in double dose and a single dose. So I'm really looking forward to experimenting with these uh, more professional non-pressurized baskets. We've got the porter filter here. This is quite substantial actually. This is a fairly heavy, it's really quite a nice little porter filter. Now there is a tamper, you can almost see yourself in that. And it's, it's fairly substantial, but not too heavy because I think it's magnetic, it sits up in the machine. So it's a little bit lighter, um, not a full heavy weight one like some of the ones I've used in the past. There is a cleaning kit. We'll have a look at that later on. Now, what is this? Okay, the razor. So. I'm gonna open that up. I think this is like a blade of some sort, yes, to sort of level off your dose. So when you put the coffee in, you can see it's got a tapered edge both sides, so it's just for leveling out uh, the dose in your tamper. I'll just show you how that works. Once you put your coffee in there, that will sit in there and you give it a little twirl around or maybe you'll just level off the top like that. Nice, now I'm gonna get this on the floor and take it out. I don't know why lately with these packaging, they split the polystyrene down the center. I used to like it where you could just lift the polystyrene out, but now they do it this way where you've got to sort of tip it out. So the, the way they say to get these out of the boxes is to lift it on its side. And I think you then have to sort of pull it out. But I tend to find that I prefer to put the box upside down and just lift the box off. As I say, I did prefer the old style where the polystyrene just lifted out. All the Breville appliances seem to be doing it this way. Is it better? No, not really because things tend to fall out when you do it this way around. So first thing here, we've got the bean hopper. You can see that. These are great hoppers. I've actually um, used these before. They've got like a, I'll show you this in a moment, what this does. Here is the machine itself. I hope I'm not uh, making too much squeaking noise. So I've got another little box here. Oh, it's a milk jug. So a milk frothing jug. I actually already have my own milk frothing jug, but we'll have a little look at this one. Oh, it's quite nice. Oh, it's pretty, pretty substantial, stainless steel. Nice Breville marking on the bottom. Now, of course, we've got the Aussie plug on there. I'm just gonna push that through and pull it out. I love the way Breville have these little finger pulls on their plugs. They're really great. We have gone for the stainless steel model. They actually do this in a, a cherry red, and I think, is it a brown, Michelle? It's black. Black. But we decided to go with the plainer, more professional looking stainless steel. There she is. Doesn't that look absolutely gorgeous? We've got a, a pressurized gauge on the front there, power on button, ground amount, filter sizes, single and double program, single shot and double shot. And I'm going to have to, oh, here we've got the very nice looking uh, steaming wand on the side here. That's, that's very simple, very elegant. I'm looking forward to having a little play with that. And here we'll have the, uh, the dose grinder as well. That lovely new smell of an appliance is gorgeous. What I'm gonna do now is just 
have a little play with this so I get to understand so I don't waste too much time and I'll explain to you how it works and what I think of it, my first impressions. So see you in a moment. Now fast forward just over a week and we've been playing with this machine and getting to know it. I don't think we can really give this a good review unless we know exactly how it works. And in brief, I'm really rather pleased with the Barista Express. It's a great coffee machine. I'm gonna just glance over, and these might be a little bit nitpicky, some of the negative things on here, and uh, to give you full disclosure as to what you might expect from the machine. Now, one of the things that bugs me a little bit is the hopper is fantastic, but it's quite small. It takes about 250 grams of beans. I think it could have been a little bit bigger. As I think I said earlier on, you can click it and take it off, but it's quite a small hopper. If you see that in contrast with the hopper that comes with the Breville grinder, um, which actually fits in there as well, which takes almost a kilo or two pounds of beans. I just think perhaps they could have used a slightly bigger hopper. It does mean that if you're a big coffee drinker, you're gonna be filling up the hopper more often than perhaps you'd want to. Next, this little razor tool that comes with it. Pretty useless, really. Um, I, I guess I'd liken it to the training wheels on a bicycle. Once you actually get used to using this, this is just gonna gather dust. We, we probably used it for two or three times. I'm not quite sure what its practical use is. We might find a way of repurposing this to something else. The idea is you use this to level off the grinds and really in practical use, you just don't use it. And my last little gripe, and it isn't really a gripe really, this great little container back here has two pressurized and two non-pressurized baskets. I find we're only really using the non-pressurized. I really haven't used the pressurized at all, so they're a little bit superfluous. It's not really a complaint though. And now the things that I love about the Barista Express and a demonstration of how it works. I did think this little tamper was a little bit light when I first got it and I didn't think it was gonna be ideal, but I love the way it sits just up in the machine like that. It's always there, you know exactly where it is, and it's actually pretty solid. Now, when you first put your beans in, and we've gone for a fairly light roast bean, it's just the way I like it. Sometimes you'll get a much darker bean and you will have to adjust the grind wheel. The grind wheel on here is set to eight for us. It dials all the way up to uh, 16 or coarse and all the way down. I won't push it because it's actually turning against the beans, uh, all the way down to zero for a much finer grain. We found eight worked well with this particular bean. Now, one of the things I love about this hopper, despite it being a little bit small, is if you put beans in there that you don't like, you can give it a little turn and you can lift it out and you can remove those beans and then replace them with some new ones. There's a few beans left in the burr grinder here that you can actually just get out by hand. We find ourselves using almost exclusively the double shot non-pressurized basket. I will say that once it's in there, it is quite difficult to get back out again, but uh, you're probably not gonna change these over that often. There's a fairly decent sized drip tray which will get all the drips of water and any coffee grinds. Now as well as the grind adjustment, there's the grind amount dial at the front here. And you can turn this dial less or more depending on how much you want to adjust the grind. And those two factors, the coarseness of the grind and the amount at which the basket gets filled are pretty important when it comes to getting the right pressure to get the perfect espresso. And I guess in a way that's where the blade did come in useful in the first few times. We could roughly gauge if we had the right amount of coffee grinds in the porter filter. So I tinkered with the settings up and down on more or less and we did this over a day or so and I'll show you in a moment. If your grinds are too fine or too compacted, you'll end up with the uh, pressure gauge getting right up here in the white area, and that means you're not getting a proper extraction. Better turn it on, by the way. It won't work until you've turned the power on. When you do turn it on, you can start grinding straight away, but it's going to go through a little process of just coming up to pressure. We need to take the porter filter and give it a little push. I should point out that I've actually selected the double shot here because I'm using the larger porter filter basket. Now it will be pretty full. It'll start to try to fall off the side, don't worry about that. I like to just lay it down and just use your finger to flatten and push the grains into the center. And then you'll take the tamper out and just pop it on there and give it a nice firm pack down. Now you do want to put a fair bit of pressure, give it a little twist, now make sure you don't have extra grinds on these little wings that stick out here because they will mess up the machine. 
Now the Barista Express only has a single boiler, which means you can't be making coffee whilst you're frothing milk. We don't really find that too much of a problem and I'll show you why. I'll take my porter filter and I'll just lock it into place. All the lights are on, so it means if I hit that double shot now, it will start expressing the coffee. I'll just pop a glass under there ready. We're not gonna express that just yet. Now the jug that came with the Barista, it's lovely and solid. It's a really nicely made milk frothing jug. I'm gonna put full fat milk into there. Don't use any of that Namby Pamby rubbish. Fill it up to just where the indentation of the spout starts. Make sure your steaming wand is over the drip tray. And we're just gonna turn the dial on the side here to steam. And it really doesn't take long. This little button at the front here flashes and then it comes to a stop. As soon as that comes on, turn it back to standby, pull out the wand, pop it into the milk, and then just turn that dial back to steam. And you want the wand just to be breaking the surface of the milk to texture it and get a nice thick foam. Now this takes a little while to get used to. Uh, if you keep your hand on the side, you can feel as the milk starts to get hot. Now the foam's a little loose on the top there, apologize. Uh, I am doing this with a camera. Let the milk warm through now, and I'm going to turn the dial off. Always remember just to wipe off the wand with a damp cloth, don't burn your hands. Now almost immediately the lights come back on, means it's back up to pressure and I just hit my double shot. Now you see there the coffee's coming out like a smooth honey and that is perfect. And the needle on the dial doesn't want to get outside the black area of the dial. So we've got a, a decent crema on top, I'll just tap my milk now. I'm not going to make lots of this for this filming so if it doesn't go well please forgive me. I'm going to lift uh, my milk and start to pour it in. Now Michelle's there with the camera, the foam starts to come to the top <laughs> and uh, it's not great. Now trust me that was the worst coffee I've poured since we've had this thing over a week but it still looks pretty good and I'm not going to bother doing another shot just for camera. You get the idea. Hot milk, foam on top, you can get a little bit of latte art but that looks pretty damn decent but more importantly, the espresso is rich and delicious. This is the way I like my coffee. I like it with milk. If you want espresso shots or shorts or macchiatos, whatever you like, knock your socks out. The machine itself, the Barista Express, is a fantastic machine. I'm really pleased with it and uh, I highly recommend. Make a great Christmas present. Um, here goes. I've got to make another one of these in a minute for Michelle. Yeah, it is rich. That particular coffee, it's very strong. It's absolutely delicious. And I'm gonna save that and have it a little bit later on. And let me think if there's anything else that I want to cover on the machine that's important for you. Now, always remember to remove the porter filter and uh, get that little coffee puck out. Actually, I'll show you over here. That they knock out fairly easily and they're very simple to clean through. Oh, I should show you the tank on the back, by the way. It's a good two litre tank. It's got a filter in there. They do ask you to replace that every few months. And we just tend to top that up in the morning when we make our coffees. So there you have it, the Barista Express from Breville. It's my new coffee machine. I'm very pleased with it. I'll be happy to answer questions down below if you want to know anything about the machine or how it's getting on with us, maybe in a year's time, uh, I can let you know. At the moment, we're enjoying it. Um, if you decide to get something different, I'd love to hear what you decide to get. If you're a big coffee fan like we are um, and you have this machine already, comment down below. Be good and I will see you on a recipe video very shortly on Steve's Kitchen and no doubt we'll be using espressos in some of the upcoming videos. So take care and see you next time. I am not boring, I just stick to